Hello and welcome to a Smurd P video and today we are looking at X-Men issue 2 and I've gone and I'm going to continue on getting the trading card uh, variant covers uh, by Dortmund I believe um, because I like them and uh, this week we've got Rogue, we've got a nice uh, looks like a nice 1992 uh, Jim Lee style look it's got some sympathy on the back which is what you would expect from the card which is cool I do like that a lot and I do like Rogue a lot Rogue is one of those characters I think I liked her more in the 80s I liked 80s Rogue quite a bit and uh, we've got this uh, little statement from Rich Rider Nova, which will make sense in a minute. Uh, it was the hardest damn war I ever fought, and that bloody wave cost me my life. So, uh, you'll get, you'll understand in a minute. So, the story begins with uh, Rogue telling her husband off for having a game of cards in the tree, whereas she thought he was going somewhere else to play a game of cards. Let's give it a little bit better. And um, I love Fing's uh, feedback. I knew you was in trouble when she dropped all three names. <laughs> which is just bright. You know, you got Rhino, you got Black Cat in there. Um, which is just, you know, an interesting combination. And let me move my coffee so the pages fall over. Uh, so we are back in the game world where the... Uh, the leader, I guess he's the leader, makes a joke about, you know what, I thought we would all make a bundle out of the destruction of Earth, which is still standing. Who would have thought a lot of you would end up bankrupt? It's a, it's a you know, it's it's a win-win, I guess, for the games master, because they win either way. They win if the Earth's destroyed. They win if it's not destroyed. Anyway, the next wager is up. One that is um, based on the Annihilation Wave which there is uh, an epic uh, run, an intergalactic run, and that's before the War of Kings, and um, pretty much Annihilus and his bugs go to destroy the world. Anyway, this creature that has agreed to go to Earth will die, his family will be taken care of, so he's going to sacrifice his life, and he's going to release all these creatures, which is brilliant. Uh, and this is written by the talented Jerry Dugan. Pepe is the artist, and Marte is the color artist. And VCs Clay and Coles is the letterer, and Tom Miller is on design. Um, interesting. I, I guess design is a big part of everything we do now. You know, we have design and marketing, design and uh, technology. You know, you talk about YouTube, what I do. I'm not very good at design, by the way, but. There are talented people on YouTube that do designs and insert stuff into their videos, which, you know, uh, I'm clearly not looked at anyway. So the Annihilation Wave is released, quite simply. And meanwhile, we have got Cinch teaming up with Gene to learn about um, his powers more and the, the telepathic part. So this will, I guess, increase his support in the field or in any situation where he can take that power and use it to do whatever's right. And she also says that you've got you were in the vault for over a hundred years. You have more experience than Scott and me. Um I, I I'm not gonna agree with that to be honest with you because when he was in the vault as far as I'm concerned he was on a mission. He it wasn't about him developing anything, although he is over a hundred years um it doesn't mean that he's got tactical experience or anything like that because he never showed that in a vault. So I'm not, not, I didn't like that statement one bit. Anyway, um, something's happened to the West, lots of life snuffed out. And the X Men are on the way, and they talk about a warning that they got about Sank being slingshotted to the earth. Um, Cinch also says he would like to tell Wolverine, but only if, um, only if she asks. So I like that because Gene would probably agree that that's not a good idea. So he releases that. Um, he's he's taxed out for the day. Now the next part I found bemused um, because I don't know what this thing is at this point, and they go straight to killing. And I thought that was bizarre. Um, 
a bizarre move because generally I, I know things have changed over probably the last decade and some of the X-Men have done questionable things and one another sometimes they've accidentally killed but generally X-Men don't kill however this time it's a threat they've gone straight in for the kill instead of just that little bit of trying to understand I yeah I know there's been times when they fought aliens and stuff but they've automatically presumed that they're killers because some people have been killed I, I would have thought that they tried to you know, at least gain some traction and realize, oh my goodness, they're deaf or something. You know, I know it's just a, a, a bit pedantic, but that's what I got from that scene. So, they're getting stuck in. And now this is another bit that I don't like. Um, Scott immediately says, uh, oh, anyway, they, they refer to the movie The Blob where everything keeps growing. So this annihilation wave keeps getting bigger. Uh, so they pull up a shield and then Cyclops says, watch your call, Cinch. So, once again, Cinch isn't the tactical leader Cyclops is. He, he hasn't got that experience. He's just lived longer in a vault and he survived the vault. Let's be honest, they survived the vault. It wasn't that he became tactically in charge of that team or anything at all. So... I found that a bit strange, or either, either that, or Dugan is a big fan of Cinch and wants to give him more growth. Because, let's be honest, he's barely had any growth as a, a Gen X. Um, so that was the only thing that I could feel. So he um, he borrows um, Polaris' power to help Gene, to protect Gene while they go out to try and explore the mind um, of this creature. So whilst the others tackle what they can in the meantime. And pretty much the brain is dead. However, with a few synapses, they can gain some some info of why they've attacked. And there is, I, I've got to admit, the artwork in this story is absolutely beautiful. The colors feel perfect. There's, there's, a, there's a, an overwhelming dark tone, and then there's kind of like a light tone, and then there's the whole mind mix and match, etc. And they almost do an MR machine for memories, and they see. And then it's pretty much some fire now. That's it. Go kill it. Go burn it. <laughs> That's it. So I'm not sure if they get something from this mind that says some fire, your fire will destroy. That I, I would have... A couple words just saying some fire. It's afraid of fire. All you got to do is burn it. Simple. You know, a simple resolution rather than it being a bit more technical, a bit more, you know, advanced. It's just brute force at this point. Anyway, um, you know, they, they want to know Sunfire's name. And then we get um, this weird, not weird, we get this story about Sunfire and about how he served his country, how he, he joined the X-Men, how he joined the Avengers. In other ways, he joined a superior... Um, power interest with the goal of self-enrichment um, and he's happy to serve and that's what he said in his Hellfire sp Gala speech um, and that's what he wants to do he doesn't want anything more he just wants to go back and Gene says no we're gonna we're gonna have some food with these people because they want to serve us too they want to say thank you now once again the the ending links to something else um, we get this weird helmet here. We got Dr. Stalus here. And, well, they die because, well, they didn't last very long. And his creature in here comes and takes them away. And he's got a lot of reading on an autopsy report. That autopsy report is around Cyclops. And it points out the, the things about Cyclops. Why on earth is he alive? We killed him on... Orcus. So it's good that this is playing in the background. I like stuff playing in the background. Nice build up. I do enjoy those things. So from that perspective, very, very smart. Very good. And once again, you know, we've got a couple of villains in the background. we got Game World. we got Dr. Status doing his experiments. And we got that dude who couldn't go land on Mars. So he'll pop up at some point, I'm sure. So once again, and this is about Summers. So Summers is exactly the same person on Earth, etc. So 
they found some way to cheat death, and we've also seen what they've done with Mars as well. They've they they've got some new technology, so but we don't want to be in a forever war with them. We've got to, but I'm gonna do some experiments to test my i i hypothesis. Um, sorry, there. Um, and this is a letter he sends into all petals, whatever that means. It's a, it's a, what's it? It's a flower term, petals. And I'm sure you all know that <laughs> without me saying that. Um, but I guess all his uh, peers or whatever, whoever they are called petals. And he is the HR director, human resource director, and chairman of the board of the Bolivian Institute. I thought that's brilliant. A HR directors, HR directors, um, and you know, I, I work closely with 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 some in my job. You know, they're, they're about the people piece. They're about um, a ensuring that we're supporting our people correctly, we're retaining the right talents, and we're doing the right thing by our people. This dude is saying to his people, "Hey." We got Cyclops alive somewhere. I'm going to go find out what makes him tick, you know. <laughs> it's just brilliant. brilliant. So it's it's a good episode. I pointed out a couple of gripes uh, throughout this issue, uh, which are which are my own personal gripes because I, they just fell a bit off. But other than that, it's a really good uh, issue once again. And I, I'm looking forward to, to more stories. Um, in this line. I've also got, just so you're aware, I'm also going to cover The Trial of Magneto and Inferno, which comes out in uh, September. So look forward to all those good stuff. So um, if you like my stuff, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for watching and embrace the geekiness. Take care. Goodbye. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Cyclops Smurd. I'm on Twitter at SmurdP, no idea what I'm doing there. I'm also got a page on Facebook, SmurdP. And embrace the geekiness. Thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.